That's right. Happy birthday to everybody celebrating a birthday today. And happy hump day. It's a hump day show here on the Robbie G Podcast. Uh, We're doing a special day this week. Uh, So let's get it started. Here's the happy birthday shout outs to all the celebrities celebrating a birthday today. Brian Danielson from AEW, formerly of WWE, is 43. Uh, Football player Julian Edelman turns 38. Johnny Gill is 58. Morrissey is 65. Basketball superstar Lori Markadin is 27. And a happy heavenly birthday to former WWE and WCW wrestler Brian Pillman, who was born in 1962 and passed away in 1997. Also want to give a big happy birthday shout out to my boy Ray Sagara, who's got a birthday today, and also to Ginger Riccio. I love you both. And happy birthday. So let's get this show started. Let's go. Not a ton to talk about today. I'm going to find some things while we go. Um, This is a lighter show. Uh, NFL, of course, is in OTAs right now for a lot of teams. Um, have reported for voluntary camps. Um, so right now it's all voluntary. Uh, JJ from Minnesota, not Justin... Uh, uh, J.J. McCarthy, but Justin Jefferson, the wide receiver, has already said he will not do any offseason tasks if he does not have a contract. So that is definitely something to look out for. He was not at OTAs uh, for the start of it, but then again, I mean, it is voluntary and he is a veteran, so sometimes they don't show up. Uh, but given he has a new quarterback, most would. I know I've seen for the Chicago Bears, Caleb Williams is there, Roma Dunze, Uh, DJ Moore was there, uh, Keenan Allen. So, I mean, even the veterans are showing up uh, when you got a rookie quarterback that you want to, uh, you know, get a little more on the same page with for the season. Uh, Let's go over the season really quick, and we are going to see... Uh, what I believe is going to happen in all the games winning and losing and then we'll see how many that is uh, That this is just early this could change as a preseason once we see I do one of these right before the season and right after the draft uh, so I do like a preliminary one now and then one later to see where we're at so here we go uh, Tennessee Titans and Chicago Bears on the lakefront September 8th can the season off I've got the Chicago Bears taking the Tennessee Titans out in that one so the Bears would be one and oh. Uh, second week, week two at the Houston Texans on Sunday Night Football. This one is very up in the air because we've got Caleb Williams, the rookie uh, quarterback, taking on C.J. Stroud, a second-year quarterback who had an amazing rookie campaign. Nobody thought the Houston Texans were going to do what they did, um, and C.J. Stroud was the major thing. This one's up in the air, but right now I'm going to go lost with this one. I think that You know, obviously the Chicago Bears are going to have some growing pains, and I think a team like this with C.J. Stroud, the defense might struggle a little bit, and in turn, Caleb might struggle a little bit. Um, At the Indianapolis Colts in Week 3, that's a noon game. Uh, I'm taking the Chicago Bears on that one. I don't see the Colts being able to beat us, Uh, so that will be 2-1. Week 4 versus the Los Angeles Rams. At 12 p.m. on the lakefront. I think that the Bears could do to Matt Stafford what they had a hard time doing to him when he was in Detroit. I think the Bears win this one and go 3-1 and one to the start of the season. Um, then we got the Carolina Panthers coming to town. October 6th is a Sunday. It's the day after my birthday. Uh, noon start on the lakefront. I really believe Chicago Bears obviously are going to beat the Carolina Panthers. I think we're going to see out of the Carolina Panthers a little the same of what we saw out of them last year, uh, which is struggling. They didn't really upgrade. They had no first-round draft pick because they had to give it to the Bears. Next year, they give the Bears their second-round draft pick. So really, they'll have their first-rounder, but they won't have the second-rounder. Bears take that one. Caleb Williams throws four touchdowns at about 350 yards in that one. Um, Then we've got Week 6. Against the Jacksonville Jaguars in London on October 13, 8.30 in the morning start. I got the Bears taking Jacksonville. I have no reason to think that the Bears could not beat Jacksonville. And they head into the bye week with five wins and one loss. That's right, people. I might be overzealous here, and it could change after preseason. Um, But, like I said, 
injury wise we'll see what happens in the preseason and training camp but right now i got them starting five and one uh week eight they come back at the washington commanders on october 27th halloween weekend I say this is going to be a shootout between Caleb Williams and Jaden Daniels, but I think Jaden Daniels takes this one. Last year, we took Washington Commanders on my birthday when they had no quarterback. This year, they do. I think Washington wins, but it's going to be a close one. They're going to lose by three. Uh, 35-32. Then at the Arizona Cardinals, Bears are going to bounce back November 3rd. They're going to beat the Arizona Cardinals and put them at 6-2. New England Patriots... Come to Chicago on November 10th at noon. Um, I think that's an easy win. I don't think the Patriots have any reason for anyone to believe that they're going to do anything different than they did last year. Um, Even with Mac Jones gone, they are suspect. Drake May, if he even starts, because I believe they got Jacoby Brisker now. Brisker's probably going to start. We'll see what happens there, though. But I really believe that the New England Patriots lose to the Bears on November 10th. That will put us at 7-2. Bears and Green Bay. Now, here we go. The division game starting. And to go in 7-2 is good because I do believe that we split with everybody but the Vikings. So here's my take on this one. I think that the Green Bay Packers come into Chicago and beat us at home. Just because that's just how it happens. I think that the Green Bay Packers win that game, but it is close, and Bears fans are a little hopeful that we can beat the Packers in our last game of the season. Uh, So Bears lose that one 7-3. Then we got the Minnesota Vikings November 24th at home on the lakefront. Bears win that one. Uh, Nobody, I think, is even giving Minnesota a chance right now with not having Kirk Cousins anymore and J.J. McCarthy if he is starting by then I think he struggles um, and the Bears win at Detroit Thanksgiving Day I think that the Bears go into Detroit and beat them that's right Bears over the Lions Thanksgiving Day um, on the road then we got at the San Francisco 49ers. I think the Bears win this one. I think the Bears are tough enough to beat the 49ers. So I'm taking a W on that. At Minnesota, December 15th at 7 o'clock. I think the Bears end up winning that game. It's Minnesota. I guess that they're sweeping Minnesota. Then we place Detroit in Chicago, December 22nd. I think that one's a loss. I'm going to take a loss on that one. I think Detroit splits the series with us. And then the Seattle Seahawks, our last home game, December 26th, the day after Christmas. Bears win that one. And then it comes down to the last game at Green Bay, January 4th or 5th. They haven't decided if it's going to be the 4th or the 5th. That's a Saturday or a Sunday. I'm hoping it's Saturday. That'd be an awesome Saturday game. I think that it's either going to be for the division or for a wild card spot. And I think the Bears are going to take them out. Our first win against Green Bay, and it's going to be in Green Bay. We're going to lose at home, and I'm fine with that because it would be even better to go into Green Bay and beat them. Now, a win against Green Bay twice would be even sweeter, but let's just be realistic here. Before you give Caleb Williams his flowers and have him beat the Packers twice, he needs a year. He's not going to do it, but he is going to make a stride in that first game. He's going to not struggle, and they're still going to lose, but it's going to be a a close one. They lose at home, come back week 18, we beat the Packers in Green Bay. They take one here, we take one there. It's beautiful. So that would give the Bears one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. 10, 11, 12, 13. That gives them 14 wins. 14 and 3. I think I'm a little overzealous on this. It could change um, after we see what they do in preseason and we check out the in- if we get an injury bug going into the season. But as of right now, I can see 14 and 3. I'm hoping for 12 and 5, but 14 and 3 would be good too. Uh, let's move on and talk about. Hang on one second. We're going to talk a little more football here really quick. I was reading uh, and I saw this pop up on Facebook uh, not too long ago and they were predicting the 2024 NBA playoffs. Obviously it's early, injuries happen, things happen, but I kind of like the way they're going with this and I can see it. Okay, so in the AFC, the number one seed, they got the Kansas City Chiefs, which not a shock there. I don't see why the Kansas City Chiefs won't be first place again. Um, Obviously, you know, 
they actually improved a little bit of their receiving core, but Mahomes, I don't think he really needs an improvement there. He was good last year. He did it. He made the playoffs and he won the Super Bowl. What more can he ask for? <sighs> Ooh, sorry. They got number two, the Houston Texans. I see that CJ Stroud defending his um, AFC crown, and I can see you know him pulling off that and getting the number two seed again. Number three, they got Cincinnati Bengals. Possibly uh, number four, they got the Buffalo Bills. Cool with that. The top four is not a shocker at all. Um, this is a little bit of a shock, though. They got the New York Giants at or New York Jets at number five. And yes, Aaron Rodgers. Hopefully, you know, for his sake, will be injury free this year and not re- uh, tear his Achilles or hurt himself again. But I say it's a little overzealous saying he's going to be number five. I would put him around number seven on this list. But I think he does make the playoffs. He's Aaron Rodgers. If he's in there could be a playoff coming to the New York Jets. Uh, so we'll see. But I don't think they're going to be the five seed. Number six, they got Baltimore. I believe Baltimore is going to have a better record than New York. But then again, like I said, we don't know. Uh, but yeah, Baltimore, I say he they would be up more towards number three. I would move Cincinnati down under Buffalo, too. I don't know where they're getting that Cincinnati is going to be better than Buffalo, too. But then again, you know, we know Josh Allen, who was a birthday boy yesterday, just turned 28. Um, you know, he doesn't always play great, so it could happen. Uh, so number six is Baltimore, and then the seventh wild card spot will go to the Indianapolis Colts, who will probably be around 500, maybe a little under, and still get that wild card spot. Um, in the NFC, they've got the Philadelphia Eagles at the number one seed, possibly. They are a good team. They got a little better. I say that could happen. Uh, number two, they got the LA Rams. Again, Matthew Stafford plays great. They make the playoffs. You know, he did win a Super Bowl with them. I could see that. Number three, they got the Detroit uh, Lions. I could see that, of course. I don't think they're going to regress. I think they'll make the playoffs again. I just don't think they're ever going to win it. But I do see Detroit getting to the playoffs every year with Dan Campbell. I just don't see them getting over the hump and winning the Super Bowl. Uh, number four, we got Atlanta. I know they've got Kirk Cousins now, you know, but at the same time, not really a huge proponent that he's just going to make the playoffs with Atlanta. Okay, I, I just don't see it yet. We'll see. Number five, we got the San Francisco 49ers. It's the Niners. It can happen. They're a good team. Uh, number six, I can see this. Green Bay, as much as I hate to admit it, Green Bay is good. Jordan Love is good. They make the playoffs. Now, here's what I like. Check this out. Number seven, they got the Chicago Bears in the last wild card spot. If the Bears win 10 to 12 games, I, like I said, put them at 14. Probably not going to happen. And I may dumb that down a little bit to like 12 and 5 once we get past maybe even 11 and 6. But we'll see. But if they do win 10 games this year, which I think minimum the Bears win 10 games. I don't see them going under 10. Um, if we win 10 games, we are definitely going to get that last wild card spot. You know, I don't foresee us not getting the last wild card spot, especially if you win 10 or 11 games. Um, so this is what they're predicting for the 2024 NBA play or uh, NFL playoffs. I could see this AFC and NFC. I think maybe a few of these need to move down and up a little bit. But and like I said, Atlanta, I don't know. OK, I don't see Pittsburgh on the list. I didn't see the Steelers making the list knowing that they have um, Russell Wilson now and Justin Fields. I do Obviously, they think they're going to miss the playoffs. And for Mike Tomlin, he really wants to make the playoffs this year. So I guess we'll see what happens. Um, possibly they'll move Indiana out of there, but I don't know. Like I said, it looks like they're going to struggle. And, uh, you know, we'll see if Justin Fields is the same guy that he was in Chicago or if he's a little better. Uh, so we'll see there. All right, football is done. Let's talk NBA and NHL playoffs. That's right. We are in the Eastern and Western Conference Finals, I believe, in both. Uh, so let's check out the NHL playoffs and what's going on there. And there is a game tonight. It's the Panthers and Rangers in Game 1. Uh, but here, let's go look at the brackets again. And we'll see what happened in round two. In round two, it was the Dallas Stars 4-2 over Colorado. 
It was the Oilers uh, four to three in their series, winning theirs, and that of course is in the Western Conference Finals, or is that the Eastern Conference Finals? It really doesn't say. Um, on the other side, we've got Florida. They beat the Boston Bruins four games to two. And the New York Rangers won theirs over Carolina 4-2. to So it is in the Eastern Conference Finals, Florida and the New York Rangers. And then in the Western Conference Finals, we've got Dallas and Edmonton. I'm going to take uh, New York Rangers and I'm going to take Dallas. And that's who I'm predicting to go on uh, to the NHL Stanley Cup. Uh, which should be happening in a few weeks already. Alright, so now let's look at the NBA playoffs and see where we stand here. Got a couple of NBA fun things I'm going to talk about, and then we'll go on to entertainment. Not a lot going on. Oh, we got the king and queen of the ring I'm going to talk about, too. Uh, but, okay, so here we go. The NBA playoff brackets look like this. Round two, a little bit of a shocker. Conference semifinals, we saw Boston win four games to one in the East over the Cavaliers. The Pacers won in seven games over the Knicks, four games to three, so a number six beat a number two. In the West, we had the Dallas Mavericks at number five take out the number one Thunder four games to two. Good for you, Mark Cuban. I hope Dallas wins. Um, and then we've got the Denver Nuggets. The defending NBA champions are eliminated from the playoffs four games to three and seven games over the Timberwolves. So the East and the West look like this. Uh, we've got Thursday night. We've got game one, or no, Boston already leads one game to none, so this will be game two. Boston Celtics and the Indiana Pacers, Boston leads that series, and then tonight is game one of the Western Conference Finals, the number five Dallas Mavericks against the number three Minnesota Timberwolves. I say we're going to have the Mavericks and the Celtics in the NBA Finals, and that's going to be a good one. I think that everybody will be excited. That starts June 6th, so we only got a couple of weeks left till the NBA Finals start. Uh, here's some fun. Here's a couple of fun things that I was seeing, and I get a lot of this stuff from Facebook. And uh, so let's go do that. For those that don't know, the NBA draft order is done, and here's how it's going to be: uh, the number fourteen draft pick is going to be the Portland Trail Blazers. Number thirteen, Sacramento Kings. Number twelve. This is funny. The Oklahoma City Thunder is going to be picking number 12 even though they just got eliminated from the playoffs. So they did get a draft lottery pick. Uh, number 11 is the Chicago Bulls. Number 10, the Utah Jazz. Number 9 is the Memphis Grizzlies. Number 8, San Antonio Spurs. Number 7, the Portland Trail Blazers. So they got two top 14 picks. Uh, number 6 is the Charlotte Hornets. Number 5 is the Detroit Pistons. Number four is the San Antonio Spurs again, so they got two drafts in the top eight. Uh, the Houston Rockets are number three. The Wizards will pick number two, and the number one draft pick in the NBA is going to be the Atlanta Hawks. Now, here's what I was hearing, and I don't know if this is true, and I really, really hope it's not. I don't really follow what's going on in college basketball this year to see who the number one draft pick should be. But I'll tell you who it shouldn't. And there was rumors about this. I don't know how true they are. That the Atlanta Hawks may go after LeBron James by drafting Bronny at number one. That way the father and son duo could play in Atlanta. Now why? On God's green earth. And I get it. You get LeBron. That's great. LeBron is still LeBron. He's going to score you know, 30 points a game. 25 to 30 a game for you. But why would you want Bronny at number one? Why would you take that pick and waste it on Bronny James? He is not a number one draft pick, nor will he ever be a number one draft pick. The guy averages 4.8 points per game on the bench in college. If he were averaging about 15, 16, I'd say, okay, maybe he'd be worth it. Maybe working with his dad, playing with his dad... Maybe he would up his game a little bit. But 4.8 a game, that might equate to 6 points in the NBA game. Why would you waste a number one draft pick on him? He will be there later rounds. If they don't take him, he will go. Somebody will take him, but later on. 
I just don't understand where, and I get it. You people want LeBron James, you know, to play for them. <laughs> it, it's just crazy. Um, yeah, so I don't know. I think Atlanta, if you're smart, you will not take Bronny James. That makes as much sense as Michael Penix Jr. going to the Atlanta Haw- uh, Falcons. It makes as much sense as Kirk Cousins going there and then bringing in Michael Penix Jr. I don't know what they were thinking. And that's going to cause a rift in that team. That's at least what I think. So we'll see what happens there. Here is a crazy stat that I saw for John Stockton when he used to play. He played, this is his total games per season. Okay. 1985, his rookie year, he played 82 games. 1986, 1987, 1988, 1989, and 1990, 82 games. Never missed a game in his first five years in the NBA. 1991, he had a little injury. He played 78 games. So he only missed four that year. Okay, then 92, 93, 94, 95, 96, and 97. Again, 82 games. Played all 82. Um, 1998, he played 64 games. 1999, the NBA lockout, he played all 50 games. And then 2000, 2001, 2002, and 2003 until he retired, again, played 82 games. There was only one, two times in his career, because 1999 doesn't count, because he played the full season, it was only 50 games. The two years in his career, he only missed games twice in his career. That is amazing. I I just don't understand it. It's just crazy to me. Like, you just look at it and say, how did he go that long and play that many games without missing any games? That's nuts. Um, Wow. And now I did find one more thing I want to talk about with basketball. Um, Let me go find it really quick. And then I want to go back to football for like two seconds and talk about something I saw. They released a list of the top 10 dunkers of all time, and here it is. And now you let me know if you agree with this or not. Uh, Number 10, Dwight Howard. Number 9, Jason Richardson. Number 8, Kobe Bryant. Number 7, LeBron James. Number 6 is Julius Irving. Number 5, Dominique Wilkins. Number 4, Blake Griffin. Number 3, Sean Kemp. Number 2, Vince Carter, and number one, Michael Jordan. Now, me as a Bulls fan, even I don't agree with this. I think Michael Jordan would have been the third best dunker on that list. I think Vince Carter and Dominique Wilkins were actually better dunkers than Michael. You know, everybody talks about that free throw line dunk that Jordan did. Dominique was doing crazy stuff. So was Sean Kemp. So I will put Jordan um, after Vince Carter but before Sean Kemp. So I put Sean Kemp at number four, Jordan at number three, I'll put Vince Carter at number two, and I will put number one, uh, Julius Irving. Now, where is Clyde the Glide Drexler? That's how he got his nickname, the Glide, from his dunking. Why is he not in this top ten list? I don't understand where these guys come up with that. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's pretty close to what I say they should should be, but like I said, there's a few that might not necessarily be on that that shouldn't be so yeah i don't know um really quick back to back to the nfl really quick the whole thing with harrison butker um making that speech at the college here's my thoughts on that and it's sports related so we're going to talk about it really quick politics aside with all this, the fact that he made a comment like that, and it was multiple comments, not just that one towards women, but there was other stuff he said at that uh, commencement speech, but the fact that he said what he said about women, um, you know, congratulations that you you got this diploma, but your greatest achievement would be marriage and servicing your husband and taking care of kids. I mean, let's look at it this way. I've seen so many ass bags come out after this. 
I mean, I had a guy tell me to shut my mouth and go play because he thinks that women belong in a kitchen. Um, these guys are all, they've always come out, but I think they've come out even more now. Um, let me see really quick. I'm going back. I screenshotted a couple really quick ones. There was that one, then there was this one. Yeah, I'm trying to find it. I gotta look through my list of memes that are on here. Here, this is the worst one that I saw. It says, yes, a woman should be a housewife, and the man bring the income. Not all men beat their wives, and I don't think Diddy, out of the blue, decided to beat on his wife. So the question is, what did she do? Okay, so we've got two things on cover here. Number one, he's saying that Diddy probably hit Cassie because she deserved it. Like, what did she do to get hit? And then, number two, is yes, a woman should be a housewife. So he agrees with Harrison Bucker, and then he thinks that Diddy, it was okay that he that he hit Cassie because he she probably brought out at him. Why is this thinking allowed? Why is that allowed? Why are we allowed to say things like this in public or a public forum and not have consequences for our actions? By the way, his name was Miguel Encarnacion, if anybody wants to know. Go look up this fool on, on Facebook. He has a Chicago Bears profile pic. Ridiculous. Light up his comments and just start talking crap to him. Let's find out where he works and dox him there too if we have to. Because this is ridiculous. The fact that he thought it's okay that women are housewives, or they should be, but then he said that about Diddy, that was even worse that he agrees that Diddy should have hit his woman. What? And then he says, not all men beat their wives. No man should beat their wives. No wife should beat their husband. What are we talking about? This is crazy. So yeah, that's just my thought. But yeah, Harrison Butker should not lose his job over it. He had freedom of speech, but at the same time, dude, watch what you're saying. And I know a lot of people are, oh, he sold out his jersey. They probably didn't make a lot of those jerseys to begin with. Nobody buys the kicker. So they probably didn't have a big stock of them. And even if they did, it's May. Nobody's really buying football jerseys. Oh, and then me and uh, somebody got into a football argument about how the salary works for NFL players. If anybody ever want to know, this is how they do it. Every NFL player who is on a team's roster during the year, the year will earn a base salary divided up into 18 installments. That covers a 17-game schedule and the bye week, which make up the season. If a player gets cut during the season, the bulk of their money gets expect, that they are expecting to earn gets lost unless they have a guarantee. So that's how they do it, just in case anybody wanted to know. Uh, let's move on now. Oh, here's a little entertainment and sports news. They talked about which games will you see Taylor Swift. So if you have a problem with Taylor Swift being at the games, these are the ones to avoid, whether you're a Chiefs fan or just watching the game. Uh, week 1, September 5th versus Baltimore. That, of course, is Thursday Night Football, and that opens the season. It says Swift actually does not have any Eras Tour dates during that week, so she will most likely be at their opening game. Uh, week 2, September 15th versus Cincinnati Bengals. Seems like she's going to be there. Uh, week 3 at the uh, September 22nd at the Atlanta Falcons. The Chiefs' first away game is in Atlanta. And because Swift has, as previously stated, the entire month of September off, it's possible she will take her rightful throne in Kelsey's box. That sounds a little bad. Uh, week 4, September 29th at the Chargers. She will be there, hopefully. Um, then week 5, October 7th, it looks like she's going to be there too. Week 5, October 7th versus the New Orleans Saints. Swift actually doesn't start her Eras Tour until later on in the month, so there's a high probability that she will be turn up at Arrowhead Stadium for that one. Uh, week 6, the Chiefs are on their bye week. Um, week 7, October 20th at San Francisco. Unfortunately, Swift will be across the country performing in Miami, so there will be no game for her. Uh, week 8, October 27th, so we'll be taking the stage in New Orleans this weekend, meaning she'll have to skip out on that game. November 4th, 
against the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. The United States leg of the Eras Tour comes to an end that weekend in Indianapolis, but Swift doesn't have a show schedule for that date, so she could make a quick turnaround and then head to the Chiefs game. Uh, November 10th with uh, the Broncos. Swift will be headed to Ontario a few days after this game is scheduled, but she might be able to make it to Missouri to support Kelsey. Uh, week 11, November 17th at Buffalo. The Eras tour dates in Toronto will be coming to an end the day before this game, so there's a possibility she may be at that game. Uh, week 12, November 24th at the Carolina Panthers. Swift will be wrapping up her second weekend in Toronto the day before this game as well. Another quick trip for Swift might mean she might be in the stands. Um, week 13, November 29th versus Las Vegas Raiders. The singer has no era tours date scheduled for the solo fans. Hope to see her in Las Vegas cheering on Kelsey and the Chiefs. Uh, week 14th versus the Los Angeles Chargers. Uh, it's December 8th. The game is the same night Swift will be ending the international leg of her Eras tour in Vancouver, British Columbia. So she will not be present. And then week 15, December 15th at Cleveland. Since the Eras tours will be officially over, Swift could be attending Chiefs games from this point on. Unless the singer has some secret project in the works, which is also a huge possibility. Um, December 21st versus Houston. She might be there. Week 17 against Denver. That's Christmas Day. Or not against Denver, against Pittsburgh. Will Swift's family be spotted at the Christmas Day game for the second year in a row? We'll find out. Uh, January 18th, or January 4th or 5th at Denver. Week 18th, the Chiefs will be kicking off their new year in Colorado. And Swift might just be there. So those are the games that we may see Taylor Swift at this year um, for the Chiefs. So we'll see if she shows up and which games that she's at. That's crazy. So let's talk really quick about the box offices. Number 10 at the box office last weekend was Civil War. Did $1 million at the box office and a total gross of $67 million in the six weeks it's been out. Number 9 was the Blue Angels in its first week. It did $1.4 million weekend gross and $1.6 million total. Uh, number 8, Godzilla. It dropped from number 5. Uh, Godzilla Kong, the new empire, did $1.7 million, Total gross of $195 million at 8 weeks. The movie Taro, in its third week, did a weekend gross of $2 million with a total gross of $16 million. Back to Black. Um, I believe that is the movie about Amy Winehouse. Yes, it is. Did a weekend gross of $2.8 million, total gross of three point one in its first weekend. Uh, Challengers with Zendaya did a weekend gross of $2.4 million and a total gross of $44 million in four weeks. Number four, The Fall Guy did another $8.4 million for $64 total in three weeks. Uh, the number three was a new movie, The Strangers Chapter 1. In its first week, it did $12 million weekend gross and three, $13 million total gross. Number two, Kingdom of the Planet of the Apes in its second week did another $25 million. Did $103 million so far in two weeks. Not a shabby movie. And the number one spot goes to If. The movie with, I believe that's Ryan Reynolds. Yes, with Ryan Reynolds. Did a weekend gross of $34 million and a total gross of $36 million in its first week. That's crazy. That's awesome. Um, and we will go on from there. One last thing I want to do before I take off. That's all I got today. It's a quicker show. Only 34 minutes so far. But that's okay. Um, I want to go over my top five songs from DMX. I listened to the CD. It was DMX. It's Dark and Hell is Hot. One of my favorite albums of all time. My number one favorite of DMX. And let's go to that album really quick. And I'll tell you what my top favorite five songs were. My top favorite songs, of course, one of them is Rough Riders Anthem. That's a given. Um, I always love the song How's It Going Down. Uh, that's number two on my list. Number three is X is Coming. I love that song. Get At Me Dog. That's another good one. And then I also like uh, Crime Story. That's one of my favorite DMX songs. So that's my top fa favorite uh, songs of DMX. I love them. Thank you, Corey Zelenka. I give that, of course, a 5 out of 5 with records because it deserves it. Great CD, 
from cover to cover. Make sure you check out. It's an oldie but a goodie. Came out in May of 1998. It's DMX, it's dark, and hell is hot. One of my favorites. So next week I'll do another band. I'm going to do actually Billie Eilish's new CD. I'm going to listen to it cover to cover. And then I will let you know what my top songs are and how I liked it. So make sure you check that out next week. Uh, I'm going to take off. Enjoy the weekend. It is Memorial Day weekend this weekend. And it is the official, unofficial start of summer. So make sure you get that barbecue going. Maybe get some people to come over. Have a good time. Uh, enjoy your three-day weekend and I will see everybody next week until then stay safe stay healthy don't die and I love you all I'll see you guys next week oh and also don't forget if you want to comment on anything that we talked about today hit me up in my email it's at the bottom of this in the little comment section area of the show comments and of course uh, you can follow me on all social media also I'll see everybody later until then I love you all peace